Baldwin, Hamilton, Howard, the Acrosonic. Ted, whatever happened to America's favorite piano? You mean the guys that used to build the fun machine? Stick around. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our other videos. Sign up for notifications. Leave us comments. We really appreciate all the support, and we love to bring you guys new content. Uh, we have a guitar channel and a synthesizer channel. Check those out. Ted, yeah. I know this one's exciting for you because you've actually owned a piano like the one behind us. Yes, I did. It was I a, used to own one. What was the model number on that? It was in the 180s, if I remember right. And it was was it considered an L? It was uh, it was a Model L, and it was in 1968. I, I just remember it, it came into the store a couple times, and I've played it. Uh, but yeah, just Baldwin is is such a powerhouse in the piano industry. Um, not only the name, not brand recognition. I, I put it there with Steinway, with Yamaha, with Kawhi. These big names that people Absolutely. know in music. Um, and people who are outside of music recognized as a musical brand. Uh, but Baldwin has that name that kind of transcends the industry, and for good reason. They used to manufacture a great piano. Notice I said used to. Yeah, and so we get this question a lot, and we thought we would do it as a topic, not only because we're very interested in Baldwin pianos, as um, uh, we carry used pianos here at the store, so we see a lot of Baldwins come in the store. People are always asking questions, is this a good piano? What's, Bal what's the history behind Baldwin? What happened to Baldwin? Why do I not see them anymore? It's on our building. We have Baldwin. Baldwin on the, yeah, right, the old style scripted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right next to Steinway, right next to all these, these names. Um, and it's just, an it was an incredible manufacturer. And so we kind of wanted to bring this as a format of what happened to Baldwin. Well, Baldwin went the way of a lot of American manu piano manufacturers did. And uh, it actually starts in the... Uh, the second half of, uh, of the 1800s, around the 1860s, uh, up through around the 1880s, there's mm -hmm. this major, major boom in the piano industry as well as all industries. And the piano was one of those that was focused a lot of worldwide attention on piano manufacturing. Because mm -hmm. you have to remember, this was the time when human beings were first seeing plows get converted from animal power to human machine power, combustible engine mm -hmm. of some sort. And so everything industrial and mechanical was extremely scientific and futuristic. And there's so much research and development into those fields. And the first time someone looks at a piano, an upright piano with the frontage off, and they see all that mechanism, that's all it took to fascinate people in, in the 19th century about the piano. Plus, they already they were familiar with the music, but when they actually saw it was a machine. Yeah. It, it wasn't an instrument at first. It was a machine. So the public fasc magic fascination, it. It, it was magic. It was mm. pure magic. Well, I, I, I see it, and it's like, you like nowadays, it's called like steampunk, and, and, you, and you see these styles. Uh, I know Westworld did it, where like the old West, and, and just in the intro, they have a player piano going. Correct. Um, and it's just beautiful to see all this, you know, steel and brass. Trains. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was, this was a big revolutionary time in the world. And in manufacturing, if you pick up one of those Pierce piano atlases, it's a pretty thick book. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's in a book tells you right there that it's just an antiquated industry because it's all online now. Yeah. But there, there's listed in there around, I think it's around 10 to 11,000 different manufacturers of pianos from around the world, most of them here from the United States. Baldwin was one that came along in the 1862. Mm -hmm. um, Dwight Howard Baldwin was Dwight his name. Howard Baldwin. And so if you've ever seen a Howard piano, it comes rooted from Howard, his middle name of, of the, the originator of the Baldwin piano. And he was a piano teacher in Cincinnati, and so he had a lot of referral base for people to buy pianos. Mm -hmm. So then before too long, he actually became a retail store, and he primarily sold Steinways and Chickerings, mm -hmm. which were the two premier pianos at the time. So uh, he started as like a retail store, right? A yeah. retail store. Mm -hmm. The guy was selling pianos. And then... He uh, started to have, well, he lost his Steinway dealership. And so he started making his own pianos. Mm -hmm. And that's what turned him into a competitor because the pianos that he built, starting with his grand pianos, were very, very 
as identical as he could make in quality and materials to Steinway's. At a more affordable price? At a more affordable price. Mm -hmm. about, We've heard this story before, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. So this is how Baldwin began. And then there was a, a major boom right after World War II in the piano industry. Mm -hmm. And part of that started to include the organ business, which mm -hmm. by the, the late 60s and early 70s, the, the home organ business is absolutely thriving. And that's a whole different section of Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And that's where they created that brand and that product called the Baldwin Fun Machine. The Fun Machine. That and was a, a surprise to it me. It was a surprise to you, yeah. I, I, it, it's funny because about 25 Years after they quit manufacturing, uh, people still come into the store. Of course, they're old timers. Say, hey, do you have any Baldwin Fun Machines? They just remember the product name and the concept of fun and music at the same time in an instrument. If you see one now, they're really quite boring. Yeah, I mean, it's just the organ and, yeah. and di the, the age of digital technology has kind of taken over where organs left off. But yeah, no, the Baldwin story is so fascinating because it does start there in retail, gets into manufacturing. And I, I read something that was. In World War II, they, they shut down piano manufacturing in the U.S. to focus. It was a manufacturing plant, so they focused on building for war machines. World War you know? II changed a lot of configurations in U.S. manufacturing. So you had, uh, at that time, Baldwin was manufacturing not just pianos, but they also built home furnishings. Mm -hmm. uh, they used to build a lot of uh, clocks. Uh, fancy clocks like grandfather oh, clocks okay. and, and mechanical, those, uh, yeah. me mechanical clocks and then the clocks that would go on a fireplace mantle. Okay. Those kind of things they built. Uh, upper scale uh, curio cabinets and that mm -hmm. kind of furniture thing that would go along with piano yeah. manufacturing. It, and it was interesting because they, when they manufactured too for the war, they, they learned some technology from building wings and building uh, fuselages for planes. Right, right. They and, built, I think they were responsible for the wings in a B-17 or the fuselage. Yeah, one of the, one of the, one of the planes they were building for, and they, they took a lot of technology, the, the, what, transformed to the 41 pin, the pin block basically right. in the piano. So if you've ever seen a pin block in a piano, it's really important because the pins are actually in a piece of wood, and that it's not like a guitar where you you have a mechanical tuner that holds right. it in tune. It's actually a pin that's sticking in a piece of wood, finely threaded. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to stay still, but it has to move when you put a when a put tuner enough comes leverage in. on it. And that forty one, uh, so it's layered forty one. Like, each grain, it was a combination of birch and maple that would go this way, this way, and they would mm -hmm. they overlaid, and that actually made something that was just a strong. As steel. Yeah, and so and so they they patented that. I think it took until 56, 1956. But this was who Baldwin was. They were inventors of this great piano technology, um, and really kind of pushed the envelope on what a piano could be. Right there with Steinway. Not only that, um, in 1963, Baldwin actually acquired the C. Beckstein uh, German piano manufacturer, which was probably one of the premier piano manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And around that time, because about three years after that, I believe in 1966, Kimball, which was a competitor of Baldwin, purchased the Bosendorfer. Okay. So you have an Austrian and a German premier piano manufacturers that are owned Fine. by no longer existing piano manufacturers from the United States. Yeah, these giant U.S. The manufacturers. It was that, that large scale of a, of a, of a business mm -hmm. to where they actually owned manufacturers that made better instruments than them. Yeah, and then by the 70s, you fast forward a little bit forward um, and move to the 70s, and they've made their millionth piano. I saw right. that. And so Baldwin was this powerhouse, the steam engine going, and just moving right into the 20th century as the dominant. Through the 60s and 70s, they had some of the most premier recording artists from every type of musical background you mm -hmm. could imagine. Uh, that endorsed Baldwin pianos. Well, they had the SD10, which we sometimes see here come in to the store, which is the, just, I think it, people spoke of it as like the best thing to ever happen to pianos when it was released. That's their nine foot concert grand that Baldwin Correct. made. Um, and I, they kept the name SD10 for a very long time. The, the SD10 was their nine foot and the SF10 was their seven foot. And both of those two pianos are the two pianos that Baldwin manufactured that are, um, qualitatively compared to Steinway's uh, pianos. Their Artist Grand, uh, Baldwin's uh, Artist Grand series is like a superior upscale home mm -hmm. piano, which is what the Model L is. Okay. And But their, their seven and nine foot models are entirely different from the rest it's, of the pianos. They're exceptionally they built. They're, and 
the last one, we, like the, the the amount of attention that these get when we get them in the stores. The last one we had here in San Antonio, we sent to Chicago f- to a buyer because they're just they don't come up for sale very often. The SD10. The, yes, the, the SD10s SF. are 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 sought after pianos, but the ones that are really hard to find and the ones that I like a little bit more than SD are the SF10, the seven. Okay, footers. the seven footers. I like well, that fit, as much as a Bolt, uh, house, Steinway right? B. Right, it fits in your house better, <laughs> but it has. There, there isn't an overpowering of volume, mm-hmm. and there isn't an overlayering of the bass notes in, in the seven. It's like a perfect like rounded okay. grand. Yeah. Uh, and it's just interesting because each of the, uh, the American manufacturers, with the exception of Steinway, piano manufacturers, took on additional business ventures in the piano and keyboard industry. And... They're no longer around, but Steinway still is. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that had something to do with it, but eventually you see through the 50s and 60s this large acquisition by piano, uh, U.S. piano manufacturers. And then by the beginning of the 80s, you start seeing this dispersion of assets, things they no longer want to own, and things that they reinvest in for new technological advances in pianos. Well, the that, organ industry got really shook up in the 80s. It got and, real shook up and, with the invention of digital. When digital keyboards hit, the analog organ industry was just pretty and, much gone. And the writing started to become on the wall. And really kind of leads into our question, what happened to Baldwin? Because you see these big companies, Aeolian, uh, Baldwin bought up a whole bunch. But these companies that purchased and almost bit off more than they could chew, really invested in things that were of the time and not of the future. Baldwin was seriously invested in in electronics, uh, consumer uh, electronics in the 80s as well. Mm-hmm. And they were that started as a result of the ability to do cabinetry work. Okay. And so they invested into, like, let's build radios, let's build all these other things. Okay. And they also did invest in the digital piano line Yeah. as well, digital pianos. Whereas Steinway never did. And then at that at this point, Yamaha had entered the scene. Kawhi had entered the scene. Um, and there was so a lot Young of... Shang, Young so Chang. So Samick. By the 80s, you have a lot of Korean import pianos that actually turned the U.S. piano market upside down. Mm-hmm. And part of that was uh, when they began importing the glossed, finished... The real shiny. The real shiny pianos, whether they were black, white, ivory or any color they wanted, mm-hmm. or wood grain. They, they, when those pianos came into the country, they were about a little less than half price of what competing grands were. Oh, American-made mm-hmm. grands. Um, and so you get, you get this influx of companies coming in at, an, at a more affordable price with a pretty quality instrument. Absolutely. Um, especially for the price differential, people were making, they're saying, hey, well, this one's twice as much. Is it, is it really that much better? Um, and then you start seeing what happens to, Bal- to Baldwin at that point. And in the 90s, they start, they really had some great pianos come out. And we see those still here in the store today. Um, and you see, you know, you see Acrosonics, you see Howard, you see Hamilton's. Um, you see these really awesome sounding instruments. And then they slowly just start to drop off. Right. So basically in 2001, you have Baldwin go out of business or really get acquired by Gibson. Gibson. And that Gibson was guitars. So G- Gibson guitars. Yeah. No, another U.S. instrument manufacturer. Mm-hmm. And so there was a lot of uh, amongst uh, a lot of instrument fans, particularly you know business fans, they were happy that a U.S. company bought another U.S. company instrument manufacturer. Mm-hmm. But that's about the time that when a lot of problems started to happen in the piano uh, world. In, in the piano world. I, I, and other things that are happening in 2001 area are uh, Yamaha closes down its U.S. Fa- uh, facility that they had built here and built upright pianos for. Uh, Kawhi shut down theirs. Um, so these companies that were from Japan had U.S. market builders, and they realized that they also need to get out of the U.S. market. It's too expensive to build here for the price that consumers Correct. are willing to pay. And so you see a lot of you know, a lot of flight from these manufacturers, and they go, we got to look el- elsewhere for this entry-line product. True, but see, Baldwin was the leading manufacturer and seller of pianos, in, whether uprights or verticals, in this country for such a long time. Their production capabilities were so high at that time. Mm-hmm. They owned most of their keys and um, keyboard actions were being made in a plant in Juarez that was new. Oh, yeah, they, had just, Mexico, yeah. they had just reinvested into a steel mill in Brazil. 
And I think that was, personally, I think that was the beginning of the end. Because mm -hmm. all those years, all those profits, I mean, we're talking over 100 years, they never poured their own cast iron frame. Now all of a sudden, in the late, getting into that. <clears throat> they wanted to get into it. But that, that was another asset that ended up getting sold as well as the Hortas. And, and then, so what they're left with is Gibson ended up owning the name and the rights of all these models of Baldwin, which at that time, Baldwin had recently acquired the Wurlitzer Piano Company. Mm -hmm. And Wurlitzer owned a number of lesser known brands that they had acquired, but one of them was Chickering. So Baldwin actually set up the manufacturing of Wurlitzer and Chickering pianos in their own facility in Arkansas. They had one in um, Toome in Arkansas, and the other one was in Conway. Okay. And so they had, they built uh, their grands and verticals, but they used to do their casework, I think, in Conway and Toome in Arkansas mm -hmm. is where they did all the instrument manufacturing. But when Gibson acquired the company, they basically had the rights to produce pianos with factories that were shut down and unsupplied. Yeah. They lost a lot of their suppliers, lines, and so on and so forth. So Baldwin has since become an overseas manufactured piano with the U.S. name put on it. Yeah, and so, yeah, they moved to China. They opened they, they opened China. a plant in China, or they acquired a plant in China. Um, and, yeah, the, I mean, Baldwin has stopped being what Baldwin was yeah. for so, so many years. This long history, this rich, fruitful history of innovation and creativity in the manufacturing world. I, I know people who have visited those plants, piano teachers here in San Antonio. They used to own their own flocks of sheep so they could have a consistent supply of wool so that their the wool in their pianos, particularly in the hammers, was always the same. I mean, it's almost a heartbreaking story because it's- It is. The, I mean, music to so many people is so, it's so about the instrument and how it responds to you, how it sounds, how it lasts. Right. And Baldwin had become synonymous with quality in those areas. Um, and we still have piano teachers that say, go find an old Baldwin. Find one from the 80s, find one from the 90s, find one as late as you can because they don't make them How anymore. How many churches do we have come in looking for, I want one of those tall Baldwin uprights. Mm -hmm. the Baldwin, was it model 6000? Yeah. We had one here a few months oh, ago. Oh, it was gorgeous. They're still incredible pianos. It was huge, yeah. And, I, and I'm a contender that if, if you find any Baldwin upright model 6000 piano that does not come out of a university, or a church, it hasn't been played enough. Yeah. And so there's a lot of great life left in those pianos. No, yeah, I mean, they're incredible instruments. And uh, we see even just people, their grandmother gave them a piano, their mother gave them a piano, and it's always Baldwin Acrosonic. It's a Baldwin Spinet, it's a Baldwin uh, 243. It's these, these amazing instruments that have been around for so long. Um, and a lot of times they need a little bit of work. Um, because they are older pianos, right. um, but there's a lot of life left in some of these old old instruments. And so that's really what we wanted to talk about today is bald and what happened to them and why are they produced in China now? Or is the quality from China the same? Uh, this, is a, this is a loaded question, but is it the same as what we, we've seen Baldwin, the Baldwins that are on the used market? If you bought a new Baldwin today, would you be happy with it? I can tell you that as far as the models that were a true name and the chicory name manufactured under Baldwin were fairly decent pianos. Mm -hmm. The one thing that the Wurlitzers, a lot of those had for a while was laminated soundboards. And there's still, the jury's still out on whether a soundboard should be laminated or not. I However, don't, I don't think it is. <laughs> I, I, I'm a believer that the smaller the grand piano, mm -hmm. if you put a laminated soundboard in it and it's a properly made laminated soundboard, with the right kind of materials, it's actually better than a solid one, only because it projects brighter. It doesn't have the complete depth. And sometimes that's just too much sound for too small of a mm -hmm. box. And so a laminated soundboard on those small, small Wurlitzers, I'm talking under five feet, some of those actually don't sound that bad. And and they ha it, it almost acts like turning up the compressor in a recording studio. Yeah. It cuts a lot of it out, but what's there is still it's good. presentable. Mm -hmm. right. okay. Now, those lines it, coming out of China in this day and age, the Chinese pianos are probably better, uh, I'm, I'm guessing. I can't say so much for the materials because the U.S. made pianos always had U.S. lumber in them. Mm -hmm. We never imported any lumber from overseas to put into end product in terms of instruments in this country unless it was something like a rare teak wood or some kind of that rare woods they use for clarinets and stuff mm -hmm. like that. However, on pianos, we've always had our own maple, spruce, and birch trees that work just perfect. Yeah. And, and so and so, I've had the opportunity to play some of these newer 
Baldwins that come out what of China. I and the 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 hard thing for me is there's great pianos coming out of China that are high quality. Um, you look at the Ritmuller line from Pearl River. Um, they make the Essex for Steinway. They make this great piano, um, and it plays well. There's High Loon, which is also a nice one, and these are priced at a good price point. They're at an entry level where it's not going to break the bank, right? Um, and they're good good instruments. Then you look at Baldwin, which has such of this momentum with its name, so they charge close to what Yamaha or what Kawai charges for their entry line instruments, and I don't think it competes there. I think it competes with the other Chinese manufactured pianos, which are decent. Like you said, they, they hold together, they're, they last a, a good amount of time, they're shiny, they play well. Um, but I'd say the Baldwin name, because of its name, is a little overpriced in the new market. and. And I hope this is one of those things where Gibson Guitars still owns Baldwin and Gibson Guitars has gone through a trans transformative uh, ownership and CEO change and all these things in the last 10 years um, where they had a big issue in Gibson. And the new CEO for Gibson has done pretty well um, as far as releasing new products, kind of taking Gibson out of a really messy, messy time. And he has said that if he can fix Gibson and all this stuff, he wants to look at Baldwin. I, I, we, we spoke to him at, at the NAMM show, and uh, he, he said he's not ignoring any of the brands that they have. They sold when he, when he was the CEO of Gibson, they sold off a couple of the, the side brands that they weren't going to be focusing on. But he realized the importance of Baldwin, and it kind of gave me hope that one day they might look into it as, as uh, something to, to go after. I always felt that those upper line Baldwin brands were competitively in uh, competitive pianos in a worldwide market. Mm -hmm. um, now I just don't think that they can even hold a candle to a Japanese-made piano oh, or, yeah. or so, Korean-made piano. So it's very sad to see what's happened yes. to Baldwin. But if you're looking for a piano, you've probably seen lots of Baldwins out there. No, the old ones, the older mm -hmm. Hughes Grands, the ones that we sell here, that the old U.S. manufactured pianos are just wonderful. They, yeah, they're out there. You might you might have seen Baldwin. You might have seen D.H. Baldwin. Um, you might have seen Howard by Baldwin, um, built by Kawhi, which is an interesting story. That Those we've... are great pianos for the money. And so, so you see all this, um, and there's a lot of quality there. The DH Baldwin line was actually, I think, built in Korea for Baldwin. So if you see, so some of the differences, um, there's a lot of information online, but um, just make sure if what you're looking at, you know kind of the story behind it. If it's a new Baldwin, it's not made in America like the, the Baldwins of old. Um, if it's a DH Baldwin, it's probably made out of Korea. Um, Howard could be built by Baldwin, could be built by Kawhi. Cool. Um, so just know what you're looking at. Um, do a little research. There's plenty because it was such a big manufacturer. And like Ted said, there's a whole book of, of manufacturer names. And so there's just a lot of rich history. And we wanted to kind of, this is almost a podcast format of, sure. of what Baldwin is or was and what it is today and kind of what happened. Um, we hope you enjoy some of Ted's playing. Um, he's going to be playing this Baldwin behind us. Oh, um, right. And so... Uh, just, just a cool, cool piano, Baldwin. If you haven't ever played one, definitely go check them out. But just a rich history, and we really love the, love the old history of Baldwin. So thank you guys for watching.